It's time for Everything Noob, your source for all things gaming. And yet another episode of the Everything Noob podcast has begun. Welcome. Joining me this evening is Dreadlow. What's up? Ms. Jemmy is under the weather. Yeah, a touch of the bird flu? <laughs> Everyone's getting sick, man. I don't understand what it is. Uh, it was me last week. It was uh, Jemmy this week, and now you're next, man. It's coming for I, you. I know. It's coming for me, man. Ugh. So, welcome to the show. we got a lot going on in the world of gaming. I think the, the thing we have to mention right at the top here is the death of Flappy Bird. Yeah, because of bird flu. No, no, no that was sorry. No, not bird <laughs> flu. <laughs> no, it was. It's pretty unfortunate because I was going to talk about this game regardless of what happened. But the the last week I was going to talk about it, and then a week goes by, and now it's off the app store. the The guy who made it's like, no, nah, I'm done. He he couldn't handle yeah. it. Well, when I heard about it. I instantly downloaded it because I knew he, he said something about it being uh, in six hours, you'll no longer be able to get Flappy Bird is what he tweeted. And so um, I think you're the one that sent me, uh, you sent me something regarding it. So I went ahead and I got on the Android market and I downloaded it real quick. So I got it on my Android. I, whether it works or not, I don't know. I haven't tried it since then. So it should yeah. still work. It still works. I, I have it. You know what? Actually, it's funny. Is I, I heard that it was leaving the app store. I had deleted it, and I'm like, eh, it sucked. It, it really is crap. If you haven't played Flappy Bird, it's it's the worst game ever. I can't get past the first it, freaking thing. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so I I deleted it, and today I saw that people are selling their iPhones with Flappy Bird on it on eBay for about fifteen hundred bucks. What? I saw some auctions. People were trying to get eighty-eight thousand dollars for one. Like, no one's gonna pay. No one's gonna wow. buy a small house. You know, it turned basically that's like a small house. Wow. Maybe my uh, <laughs> maybe my tablet's gonna be worth about ten thousand dollars or something now. I don't know. It, some people <laughs> think that it's going to be this big deal. And it's this rare thing now. You know, it's funny, though. Today I see this, right? It's been off the App Store for a couple days now. I go into my iTunes. I plug my phone in. I'm like, let me try this. And I go into my iTunes, and I download it on my phone again. Because since I had downloaded it once before, it saved in my cloud. Uh, so now I always have nice. it. Here's the there thing. You when, you, when you buy and or just download things on the App Store, they marry to your iTunes account. I don't know how it is for Android. But for me... My my Apple ID has all my stuff on it. So if I get a new iPhone, let, let's say this gets run over by a semi and lost in the cold snow, I don't know. Whatever it's saved happens, in your cloud. it's all saved in my cloud. So I can plug this in my new iPhone into my computer and all my junk gets uploaded onto it like that. It's instant. Yeah. And it's like I have my old phone back. So what's you know what's what happens when you buy a, a fifteen hundred dollar iPhone with Flappy Bird? And then the person decides to unauthorize the all the all accounts. Maybe like right because iTunes gives you five, I think, unless they got did away with that. You get to authorize five devices, and once you hit that five, you it's best to just delete them all and start over because that could be really old iPods you don't have anymore that are right. still authorized. So yeah, it it's confusing to me that people. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, if you sync. If you create an iTunes account and you sync your phone with it, it's going to delete that data off your phone, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's not your account. Those are those are paid for apps that somebody put on that phone, right? That's how I, I mean, see it. If you pay for an app and you put it on a phone and somebody steals your phone and tries to connect to their iTunes, it's going to delete it off the phone because it's not your account. It's going to you know, it's going to be gone. <clears throat> uh, so yeah that's what I'm thinking that's that's how Apple's always worked in my eyes but again I've been wrong before maybe they found a way out of that maybe you can yeah. just put apps that don't have a you know an owner on a phone but if that was the case then it'd be a huge problem where, where people were downloading apps and trading them amongst each other like okay I paid a hundred dollars for this app but I'm gonna give it to my friend for free yeah it doesn't work like that you have to 
You got to pay for it. Yeah, it didn't. <clears throat> It installs into your phone, so it doesn't have the the main install file left on it. So you can't just transfer it over. And I, I have the article that will be linked in the show notes, but people in the comments were like, these people are idiots. There's already torrents <laughs> to download this app. <coughs> so you can just download oh, wow. it off of a torrent. Probably Android would have an easier time doing that. I don't know about Apple and torrents. Uh, if you have an unlocked iPhone, I'm sure you can get Flappy Bird back. And people are already making copycat versions of it. Oh, wow. As it is. Yeah. it It's already being copied. So don't freak out. You can still play Flappy Bird, and you don't have to pay uh, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now, I don't know if this is real, okay? But you've heard of Athene, right? Uh, He's real famous for World of Warcraft. Oh, He's yeah. Okay, I, I didn't know. Okay, I didn't know what you yeah, said. Yeah, he, he had a... He put up a video about Flappy Bird and a Flappy Bird server for Minecraft. What? And I was looking at it and I'm going, is this real or is this fake? And it's one, it was, it, he had it listed for one day only or something like that. And I think he was going to unlist it so that whoever got on is, is the crew that's going to be on it. I'm not sure. But I have to do some more research on that. But yeah, he showed the actual server with Flappy Bird in it. And you were a chicken. And he calls it Flappy Bird MMO. <laughs> so everybody's a chicken, and they got to go through these pipes. Ah, oh, it's funny. That, that's anyway. the game, basically. You, you're this ugly little pixely bird, and you just tap your screen to flap. And as soon as you stop tapping, he drops to the ground like a ton of bricks. And then, yeah. you know, game over. So you have you to have get through to. these little pipe obstacles... And that's the whole game, and it never ends. And I've gotten up to three points. That's my high score, three points. <laughs> and I'm like, this is dumb. This is a stupid game. Why would you know? Why are people hurting them themselves over this? Like, oh, I hate this game. Just okay, then delete it. It's dumb. It's horrible. Why are you paying it's... top dollar for? You know, how many apps probably get deleted off the app store every day. This one just got a little <laughs> yeah. bit popular, and everyone's freaking out. It's one of those simple games. It's like the cookie clicker. Yeah. It's just it's just one of those games where if you're in some kind of office, doctor's office, waiting for the doctor or whatever, and you don't really want to play like Minecraft or something on your phone, you know, you want to play something quick and easy. That's it. You just sit there and tap the screen. You don't there's no special thinking involved, just get through the ops obstacles. So it's like one of those. I think that's why it became so popular. Yeah. It, <laughs> I'll admit, it is very addictive, and yeah. it it definitely. It, it, what I was gonna say originally, before the app got pulled off the app store and became a whole news story, is I was gonna say I believe this app is the first thing people will remember about 2014. When people it's go back, Flappy Bird. Yeah, when people go back <laughs> at the end of the year and they recount all the things that happened, you know, 2013 had a whole bunch of things that made it 2013. Flappy Bird is now. 2014's thing it was the yeah. first thing of 2014 that's basically what I wanted to say I thought it was kind of cool like I never notice it when it's happening you know what I mean like yeah. when a big thing happens in the year you don't really think about it like that and that's just I don't know for some reason to like this is 2014's thing the first thing of 2014 I think 2012 was Gondam style yeah was the, I think that was 2012 and you know I didn't even think of it then I'm like this is just stupid but that became like the theme song of 2012. Yep. So that's funny, I, and it's funny to me when people at the end of the year they do because we did our you know top indie game thing. Flappy Bird's going to be on that nomination list <laughs> just simply because of its popularity, <laughs> not because of gameplay, not because of graphics, not because of writing, not because of anything a real game would be deserving of, but because uh, it was just a big ordeal. It was just a stupid story. <sighs> Yeah, well, it's interesting, though, why he supposedly did this. Um, people are speculating, and he put some tweets out there, but he just basically was overwhelmed with its popularity. But this one website I'm on now kind of says that it's possible because of it's – a, it's, a, it's from Vietnam. It's a Vietnamese. Yeah. He's a Vietnamese developer. They don't have a whole lot of – resources to put together a company that could produce this much you know this popularity uh, that could i mean that could that could pull in this popularity um i guess it was um 
It says at the height of its, of its success, it has been pulling around $50,000 a day in advertisements. So, you know, I don't know what their their government is over there or how they work things. And it might that might have a lot to do with it, too. I mean, that, you know, I don't know how they pay taxes or what, but it's just overwhelming. It's a lot of stuff. He said that he couldn't deal with it anymore. That's what I read. I didn't see... But I read two things. I read he, he thought it was ruining people's lives, which I, I think is stupid. And then he <laughs> said he couldn't deal with it anymore and he wanted to be left in peace. So you might be right because since he's not in our country, in our country someone could make $50,000 a day off advertising and pay taxes like everyone else and it wouldn't be a big yeah. deal. You know, oh, okay, that guy just struck gold. Maybe in Vietnam it's different. You know, that's probably a fantastic point because maybe he was making so much money and it was it was becoming a problem. You know, he might even have a conscience and think to himself, this is dumb. This is a dumb game. I just put it out there for fun, no. and I didn't expect it to be that popular, and I feel bad for all these people who are getting my game. <laughs> Maybe, but he's not – It's not. they're not paying money for it, so it wouldn't be – No, it's advertising. It was, yeah. yeah if true. it was me, it wouldn't be under my conscience. And the ads are very, very obnoxious. I believe as a developer you have a choice on how frequent the ads can be. The ad right. is like right there at the top of the screen as soon as you start. And it's kind of big. It almost interrupts the, the game a little bit because I can fly the bird up into the ad and back down before getting before hitting the first pipe. Like that's that's how much of the screen it takes up. And it's and oh, I imagine for oh. iPhone 4 users, because my screen's taller, I imagine for people with shorter screens, it's even more obnoxious. So he's making he could have made the ad smaller if that was the case. True. But I don't yeah. think it's that. I think it's just I think it's what you said originally where it's probably a lot of money and he has to pay a whole crap ton of fees or something on it. Or maybe people are just angry. Maybe he he didn't like being bullied on the internet. I mean, that could be it's that possible. could be another thing too. If it was me, I would just take my money. You don't have to update that game. It's done. It's done. That's it. You, you And why it. doesn't he sell it? I mean, that's he a lot wouldn't of sell I mean, it either, yeah. People try to buy it from him. He's like, nope, not interested. That's crazy. He said he's going to make more games, though. Uh, there's got to be something more to it. There's got to be yeah. something. Uh, th my my dad, actually, I showed it to him, and he's like, I wonder if this is one of the apps I heard about. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I heard that uh, the NSA is using phone apps to like track your phone activity, and it, it's kind of hidden in, in little apps here and there. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a government conspiracist or anything, but it was like on a lot of news sites and stuff. And I'm wondering, maybe that was one of the apps, and maybe he was getting bothered by the government. And he's like, no, I'm done. You know, that's just one. That's another oh, theory. That's, yeah, well, but I don't I'm not, I don't get into politics or anything, but it, it's right. all these things could be. There's got to be some reason why he wouldn't sell it and why he's just acting this way. Maybe he's taking his money and running, and he doesn't want to be. Deal with it anymore? Uh, I read one other sentence. I read because of all the articles on this are very short because he's not saying a lot. But the one other thing I read that kind of makes the most sense to me is that he said he's using all of his resources to uh, host this game. I think, and by that I think he means he since he's an indie developer, he's hosting the game off of like a home server, and he can't do anything else with the internet except let people upload the game from him. Oh wow! Hmm. That could be something too, but in my mind, if you have if you're making fifty thousand dollars a day, you could easily buy a upgrade. server or upgrade. But again, Vietnam, in Vietnam, maybe not, you know, maybe not, so you know. But take your fifty thousand dollars on a Commodore move to America. Right? Yeah, move to America, move somewhere else. Like, oh, that obviously, kind of money. you know, if you're making that much money, you could move out of the country. Right. But and maybe he doesn't want to. Maybe he wants to stay with his family. Who knows? There's like so many different things this could be. But it's weird yeah. that he wouldn't sell it and just take that payday. Yeah. People would pay a lot of money for Flappy Bird just to own it. Sure they would at this point. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be popular forever. I, I give it this year and people will forget about it. Well, there's going to be – watch. People are going to start making some similar games, if not already. Yeah, well, Just there is one. If you type in Flappy Bird, you'll find one that looks uh, gameplay-wise identical to it, but different graphics. And it has way less stars. I think people don't like it at all just because it's a copycat. It's not Flappy uh. Bird, but it's the same exact game, same exact mechanics, and it's not Flappy Bird. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned, remember I mentioned that uh, I was wondering if, if it was just being overwhelmed with so many people 
you know, interested in his game. I was thinking of Notch in Minecraft and how he was just overwhelmed, and that's why he kind of turned it over to Jeb. He didn't expect the popularity of Minecraft like it was, and it just it threw him off. I was wondering if if Jeb wasn't around, if Minecraft would have just stopped in development at that point. I think you're right. I think I think Notch was completely capable of uh, disappointing everyone on that. That's why he gave it to Jeb. Yeah. Because he, so. he even stopped development on his next game that people were really excited about, and he just <laughs> They stopped. even made a website about it. Yeah. There was a, a, a fan site for it, you know? It's like, wow. But uh, somebody, I guess, took it over. Not took it over, but basically made a game, you know, like it or something. I'm not I, sure. I haven't heard anything about that, and Notch was in full support of it, but I haven't heard a thing about it. I wonder what happens. I. Maybe they're just still working hard on it. Who knows? I want to quickly uh, say that tonight Jimmy's not here and uh, we're using Skype, which we never use for this. And right. the thing about Skype is it'll it'll obey you when you tell it not to adjust your audio settings. And Google Hangout won't. It just keeps adjusting your audio settings. Well, right now I'm recording my podcast. Uh, see, I popped again. I'm recording the podcast through Adobe Audition like I always do. And the volume is like 10 times higher than normal because Skype is allowing my audio gate to open louder. So if the audio quality on my end is really bad today, I apologize. I'm kind of watching it, and I keep lowering my mic and lowering my mic. So now the the <laughs> the video viewer is probably like, why does it keep getting quieter? And yeah. my audio feed in Audition is just through the roof. So I'm going to try to like back off the mic a little bit and talk a little bit quieter. Tone it down. Yeah, <laughs> I just noticed that too. It's messing up with, with me too. Yeah, we, but, we didn't test this like we should have. No, it was like a... A quick thing. The video feed on Skype, though, is a lot nicer to use than Google Hangout. Otherwise, you guys oh, yeah. would have just been looking at Dreadless face the whole time, and I would have been tiny in the corner. And since I didn't want to do that, I tried this yeah. instead. <laughs> but I'm done too many of the thumbnails on those videos anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's you and you and Jemmy get the big camera, and it won't switch to me. So, with, you know, <laughs> yeah. I guess you talk more than her, and so you have the screen on you, and it just stays in the last... So if I'm talking, it doesn't switch to me. It just stays on the last person who talked, which was probably you. Yeah. So you get all the thumbnails. We got to make thumbnails for that, man. <laughs> we got we to gotta yeah. legitimize our YouTube channel. Anyway, so, yeah, Flappy Bird, Minecraft, all those things. We also need to talk about uh, Rust, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I... I wanted to talk. You wanted to talk about it for a different reason. I'm a little bit disappointed, and at the same time, I'm not surprised because we talked about this a couple weeks ago, and this was the perfect example of what I was trying to say. So, and I know you probably don't agree with me at all, but it's okay. So, <laughs> Rust got rid of the zombies in the game. Yes, they pulled them out, and to me, I'm thinking, oh, no surprise, everything in Rust is temporary while they work on beta, but. I saw people on Twitter legitimately just angry, like so mad the zombies were gone because they liked them. They were a part of the game, and now they're gone. And but it just blew people's <laughs> minds. And it, it really like that's what and that's what I was trying to tell you a couple weeks ago. You can't put temporary things in a game that's getting that popular. You have to either not put anything at all, or just take the time you made to code the zombies and code in whatever bad guy you wanted to put instead. Yeah, but it is something, again, if you go on their website, they actually, you know, they, they let you know things are temporary. And they did way back when it first started. You know, they let yeah. everybody know what was going on. So the zombies are probably going to be replaced with something like bandits that will shoot at you. Things like this. I mean, we're talking, again, this is just alpha. We haven't even gotten into a beta phase yet with this game. So I'm imagining all kinds of neat things to come. Someone in chat just said they had to move the zombies due to copyright with DayZ. I thought they didn't want to be no. confused with DayZ. I didn't think that was a copyright battle. No, they they don't they don't want this to be a zombie um, survival game. They didn't. They never intended it to be a zombie survival game. So That's why. okay, here's the thing. Why okay? So you put zombies in anyway for temporary purposes. How hard the, would it have been to code bandits that had no qualities other than to chase you? Because that's what the zombies did, right? They chased you. 
Yeah, so, and then they started whacking on you. Why not texture the zombies as bandits and then just make them chase you? Because obviously the bandits are going to have completely different mechanics than zombies. However, people will be more forgiving if you gave if you improved on bandits instead of make zombies. I think they did it because of the hype of zombies back when they first started developing. So that's why they say, okay, well, let's just throw zombies in there for now. That's I think that's why they did the zombie thing rather than throwing in bandits. And... Uh, you know, maybe they are they are guilty of playing off of uh, what people were looking for at the time. Yeah, that could be that. It, it just kind of bugged me because they they did it with guns, or they're going to with guns. I don't know if, what they're doing, but I'm not following it as closely as you are. I, and you were saying bandits as if they haven't come out yet. So now there's no zombies, so there's no anything? Like No, no, no. no. They replaced them with more wolves and bears. But okay. these wolves and bears are red instead of the normal color and so when you kill them they drop see that it doesn't make sense i know because this is alpha they drop uh, a backpack and you can open the backpack and get the same loot that you got from zombies okay. so basically the zombies are still there they're just not zombies anymore they're wolves and bears it's the same mechanic same everything they come after you and try to kill you but they're now they're bears and they're wolves that's I think all. you should just leave the zombies until the bandits are ready. Well, the reason why they didn't leave the zombies is because they knew that if they waited until, like, when they decided to put this in, people were going to be mad about the zombies because people were getting used to them, and they didn't want people to get used to the zombies. So that's why they took them out now. And they even put on their website, you know, kind of like a, not an apology, but, a, you know, well, it's time. We need to take out the zombies. People are getting too used to them. And it, they knew they were going to get a lot of hate for it. So I, again, I just think but they, they would went get more it. later. Yeah, they would have gotten more later if it gotten more popular and they would have sold more. It would have really gotten crazy. They could have just Rest waited. Books. They could have just not put anything at all and just said more enemies coming soon, and people would have been like, "It's alpha, I understand." But instead, they made it feel more complete than it was. And yeah. now it's like people got used to it. People enjoyed the zombies and the mechanic, and it's gone. That was my complaint. It's like, come on. It's going to get – if give it a chance, it's going to get better. I'm sure. It's a great game. I'll still play it. I'm not one of the people yeah. who was angry that the zombies were gone. In fact, I hate zombies in games because it's just overdone. I'm sick of freaking zombies. So good move on that. I just think changing your game when so many people are getting used to it and being like, oh, well, zombies were temporary. And people are like, what do you mean temporary? Why would you put them in, it in the first place then? Well, they were a placeholder. <laughs> placeholder? Just put freaking whatever. Come on. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, but again, alpha is alpha, and usually you don't expect this kind of popularity with just an alpha game. They did not expect this. I know. But it's, it's getting very, very popular, and so they need to start moving and showing what they're doing because people are getting the wrong idea about the game. And so they don't want that. So they're doing it now. They figure, okay, well, you know, we've reached this peak of popularity at this point. Let's go ahead and see if we can clear the fields a little bit and <laughs> get rid of some people that want zombies so that we can, you know, start off fresh. No, I don't know. But I, I just think um, I like it. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to what they're going to add next. So they've already fixed the mechanics as far as when you're chopping down a pile of wood now it changes form. So like when you hit the wood a couple times, then the wood gets smaller. You hit it again, it gets even smaller okay. until it's nothing. So they've, they've kind of made these kind of neat com mechanics with it too. Also the, the, uh, all the animals now react to gunshots and they'll run away from you. Um, if you like trap yourself in a house because a bear is outside your door He'll lose interest and run away and go back. Okay. So, they, they, I mean, they've changed some of the AI. I mean, they're, they're, they're really doing some cool improvements. Well, so. that's, I mean, that's good. I'm really excited to see where it goes because it is a really good game. It's, it is, if you're looking for something that's like Minecraft but a little more rough around the edges yeah. and, and it's it's not as cartoony, it, it's a really, it is really good for that. And, you, you know, it... It doesn't require you to be so damn creative. Where Minecraft, you have to build every little piece of your house. This just gives you a wall. And you know, okay, I'm going to put my walls in this shape to make a house. And it's 
it, it, you know, it's good like that. I, I think a lot of people like games like that. So it's good. And I mean, your server, your server is awesome. Oh, yeah. It has like a store in it. And that's really I have cool. a store. Yeah, I've got my own server, which is a modded server. So it's got it's 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 very kind of Minecraft ish because you know I come from a mine the Minecraft mindset where you know you have a server, you have like a main town or whatever, and I've got all these different plugins that you can interact with. So you can like you you can buy things from the store. Um, you know, there's there's uh, different uh, different things like. Well, there's not a whole lot you could physically add to a server, so it's not something like that. But, you know, with the store, with the economy, there's actually a full economy on there. Um, I, you know, I don't have the sleepers where people, when they log off, they're asleep. And I have optional PvP, which means that if you go on the server, you're automatically flagged PvE. If you decide you want to do PvP, you can, do, you can become PvP by flagging yourself PvP, kind of like on an MMO. But if you attack something when you're PvE or you try to destroy a building, you're automatically flagged for PvP. So you can't get away with That's... you know trying to be PvE and going on there and trying to trying to uh, attack somebody. No, it's going to flag you PvP instantly. So yeah, I've got I got features like that. It's got a slash home, so you can set home, and then if you're out and about in the world, you can do slash home, go back home. You know, I've got things like that. So. It's 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 really cool. There's a lot of neat things uh, that you can do with it. Um, I'm gonna try and get quests and stuff in there eventually. You get a starter kit when you go on the server, which doesn't seem to be working right now, but I have to fix it. Yeah. But yeah, oh, so cool. I don't know if um, I I guess I could say how you get on it if people are interested. Um, we'll have a link in the description in the show notes. Yeah. I guess we'll do it that way. I don't want to say it kind of like. You know, well, yeah, live, we we don't want, you know, obviously it has rules and stuff, and uh, the information to get on Dreadlow server will be on that uh, the show notes page, and I don't know, maybe we'll try to get, uh, we'll try to get you if you want. Anyway, we'll talk about trying to get you on the Vortec community website somehow, or yeah, you could that be you know, cool. If people on our on our Minecraft community were, are looking for a Rust server, we can point them to your your direction. Cause I don't, I don't want to run a Rust server. I'm not. <laughs> I got enough going on. <laughs> so I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, and speaking of the Vortec community, we got a lot of stuff going on with our big survival server. If you're looking for a Minecraft server, VortecVids.net for more info on that. And uh, of course, yeah. EverythingNoob.com for info on Dreadlow's Rust server. Now I wanted to target a. I wanted to basically alienate a lot of people right now because I want to bring something up. Um, that about a game that no one plays. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, to me it's relevant and I think people can relate nonetheless uh, so I, we talked about this gosh I don't even the last time we, we talked about it on the show but RuneScape they, they're doing something kind of interesting and I'll kind of give everyone the backstory real quick so they introduced this combat system last year called the evolution of combat and nobody liked it because it changed the entire combat system. This is a game where it's like a top-down view. You click to move your character around. So naturally, when you fight things, you click on the monster and your character just fights it. Well, right. this new combat system is more hands-on where you program all the uh, combat moves into your like keypad, like on numbers 1 through 9, just like oh, World wow. of Warcraft. But it's still right. click to move. So it just kind of ruined the feel for the game, and they required you to use it. You can't get out of it. So many people quit the game that they're like, wait, come back. So they made old school RuneScape and they dated it back to like 2007 version. And now everyone who hated Evolution of Combat went to play old school RuneScape. And now they're finally do taking a page out of the indie communities book and going, maybe we should listen to our people who exactly. play the freaking game. And they put it up right. for a poll, and I'm kind of interested to see where this goes because a lot of people have voted yes on it. They're, they want to introduce something in the new game called Legacy Mode, not old school, like the, the original RuneScape, RuneScape 3 now, called Legacy Mode. And it's basically the old combat system on a toggle switch. So you can play the old combat system, but if you want to do any of the really new stuff, you have to use the new combat system. How do you huh. feel about that? Like, uh, it's... 
you, well, because I think you know that some people are going to be playing the old system, some people are going to play in the new system. Won't there be an advantage to one or the other, especially in combat, if you're on, on a server and you're playing PvP with somebody and they've got a different system than you? They mentioned that they said that they might make servers that where they separate it, and then oh. they might make test servers where they have both together, like so you can choose which combat system you want to use, and people can fight against each other like that. It just introduces, like, it, you're splitting your... Co- First, you split your community on two different video games, right? One older right. version of your game and one current version. And now you're splitting your community in the current version into of the three. game <laughs> into two more little pe- oh, people. Oh, two who, more. Well, I mean, okay, yeah. so you have the original game, you have old school, but you go back to the original game and split that into two. Now you okay. have people who use the old combat system in the, in the new game, and people who use the new combat system in the new game. Right. And it's like, <laughs> why don't these people just, like... Go like level the whole ground now. Like, okay, we screwed up. Let's make something. Let's just rebuild, you know? Because the game on average now gets about a hundred thousand people playing it, which is in ter- in terms of a big MMO, that's nothing. I played back in the day where about a million people were online at one time. And yeah, now, and they're lucky to get a hundred thousand. Well, so they they kind of they kind of see that the old school is probably a lot more popular than their new one, right? Well, yeah, because eighty percent of the community voted yes on legacy mode, which means it's going to go through. Yeah. So the eighty percent people who probably left their their evolution of combat version in the first place, they're like, "Oh, you know, I still put years into that version. I would love to go back to it." So yes, legacy mode, please. And old school is not really easy to find, so it's not like they something made it better. That they... they made it easier to find. They fixed that. It, yeah, it, it's cause... just not up to date with people's graphics because back when runescape was that old people had those tube monitors still like flat screen yeah, monitors yeah. weren't very popular so when you played on this tiny little screen it was actually pretty big yeah now yeah. my monitor is 1080p so the screen the runescape screen is really small and you can't do anything about it that yeah, old school yeah. screen is tiny so it would play better on a smartphone honestly <laughs> But yeah, wow, I, I wanted so. to bring it up in terms of community. It's it's not really whether you play RuneScape or not. I'm I'm talking like indie games that have made dire mistakes here, because they they are an indie company, and they've been around for ten years now, twelve I think actually, and they still, you know, they're still like making mistakes. They've made mistakes from for a long time, and they've managed to still get by, get by. And now I think we're gonna see the end of that game because you're splitting people up too much. You honestly are. Holy crap. And it sucks because it was my first MMO, so I'm very I have a really strong attachment to it, even though it sucks. Like it really is a terrible game. <laughs> but <laughs> I have this like insane attachment to it because it was my first MMO. So you know, all the time people put into World of Warcraft and stuff, it's gonna be like that for me, because I've put in so much time in that stupid game. Well, maybe this will be the fix, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe this legacy thing will be kind of the fix fix for all. Maybe they're gonna finally listen to everybody. And then that Maybe. would be good. I mean, I'm going to try it as soon as it comes out. Uh, my buddy Aitcraft and I, we've been streaming it a little bit. We're trying to like accomplish some goals on, on a live stream together. And we stopped because this was announced. And uh, we like it was between we were trying to get our schedules together. And then like this was announced. We're like, ah, screw it. You know, let's wait till this this gets all smoothed over. So because we've both put like tons of time into that version of the game. I would love to go back. I mean, if if they were to, to come up, they want to develop a new game. What they need to really do is uh, to have something separate from old school RuneScape or whatever. Come up with a uh, first person v- version of it. Now that would be I I would See, like that. Yeah, people would would play that. Call it because RuneScape three came out, and I'm like, oh, maybe they're finally doing what I've always wanted them to do and make it move. So I want to use WASD to move. I don't yeah. want. I don't want First to use person, my mouse yeah. and click around. Still, it's not the '90s anymore. Let me move with my keys on my keyboard. Yeah, you know, like every <laughs> other game. <laughs> that would be that would be kind of kind of neat. I would probably join that game if it ever became like a first-person view of the well, game, kind of uh, like you know. The thing about RuneScape is I don't know if it would work like that. When when I really think about it, it it's a game about grinding. Basically, every skill you do is grinding. So, could you imagine, like, walking up to a rock and then constantly swinging your pick to mine the rock, and you're, like, first person, and that was how you got your mining level up? It's it's a little easier to, to digest when you're looking at it from a top-down perspective. Okay, so we're talking about Worm Online? 
<laughs> it's kind of, yeah, it would be, Worm Online was 3D RuneScape, if you yeah. really think about it. It is, it's not, it hasn't gone anywhere. But yes, <laughs> it just, it has a really ugly UI, and it's it's a first person RuneScape, because that's how Worm Online played for me, yeah. and that I didn't like it, because I feel like I could be using all this time to level up my RuneScape character, which I actually care about more than this Worm Online character, this is nonsense. <laughs> so... Yeah, it, it just I wanted to bring it up because it, it's just crazy to me that this company is still it, maybe it's either crazy to me that they're finally listening to their community or it's crazy to me that they think this is going to work. I don't know which I'm kind of waiting to see what happens and I'm going to keep people updated on it because I'm definitely going to play if if it works out. Well, yeah, hopefully, like it, like I said, that this is the end all to the problems that they've had in the past. So, yeah. Anyway, in in other RPG news, South Park Stick of Truth is coming out soon. Yeah, March. Well, you said March 4th. I got something that says March 7th. Somewhere around there. Steam is telling me I can pre-order from March 4th. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. It basically, it's it, it looks a lot like a South Park episode. You're playing through as a new... You're the new kid, and you can customize your character, like your little South Park character. <laughs> and it, it plays like an episode of South Park, all the gameplay footage I've seen is always that it looks like you're watching TV. It doesn't look like you're playing a video game. It looks like you're watching South Park. Oh, so man. I, I think it's going to be really cool because it, I, I was listening to uh, that like some of the dialogue while I was watching this gameplay, and they said, I hear he's the Dragonborn. And, <laughs> and things like they're making fun of Skyrim. They're probably going to make fun of like all – instead of like oh, pop culture icons, now it's going to be video game stories and video game icons. And Game of Thrones and all the all all the stuff they did for that Game of Thrones episode series they recently did is I think all going to be in the game like those oh, wow. like the the South Park characters in those <clears throat> uniforms. It, it looks hilarious. I was watching the gameplay footage, just laughing my ass off. <laughs> and South Park hasn't been that funny to me in a while. The show has has been pretty bland the last few episodes I saw, but it looks really good. But would you pay sixty dollars for it? That's an awful lot, but it's an MMO, right? No, and it's free to play. I thought it was just an RPG. Is it? It's not what free to play MMO. That's right. I thought it was, was just an RPG. I I thought you were playing through like a Skyrim st- style single story. player. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's single player. Would you pay sixty dollars for that? Because that to me, I don't care. That's, that's if pretty it's, steep. I don't care if it's Ubisoft who put their name on it and their seal of approval. That's a lot of money. For a South Park title, they're my favorite South Park title. Title, and I really wish maybe it's maybe it is. I haven't seen it, but I I hope one day it comes out for PC. It was a uh, it was like Tower Defense, South Park Tower Defense Go or something like that, and it, and it was on the Xbox Marketplace, really cheap, probably twenty bucks in Microsoft points or maybe less, and it was a Tower Defense. And you had the little characters, and each character had their own ability and their own types of towers, and you can set up all the towers, and it was a lot of fun. I played that game for hours. It was so good. Wow. And if the same people are behind it, it said same South Park new developer or something, so I don't know if the same people are behind it, but it, I like the South Park humor, and I think it's funny that they're making a game, but $60 is a lot. I was very surprised to see they want full retail for that. Like triple A retail. Yes. I'm sorry, you're still South Park. I watch you for free on the internet. <laughs> it's hard for me to justify sixty dollars for your game. I could see thirty nine dollars I would pay. Uh, forty Maybe would be that's the max. even too much. I would say yeah. I thought thirty bucks was what it was gonna come out for. They've been talking about this game for years. I've seen wow. stuff about the stick of truth for a long time. So now we're finally getting close, and I just think it's yeah. a lot of money. Ugh. That is a lot of money. I yeah, but they got a lot of people to pay. Think about it, though. I mean, it's a television show. They got to pay, you know. You got your writers, obviously, writing the story. Same writers for the television show. And then you got all these game developers on top of it. But the graphics, the artist, the art has to be the easiest part about it because it's, they, they probably use the same damn artist for the show. That they use well, you for know the, the graphics. Yeah, you know the 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 production company has to get their part in it too. So maybe that's why. 
I don't yeah. think, and if that's the case, it sucks because I don't think that game is worth sixty dollars. But who knows? I'm gonna have to watch. That might be a game where I go and and watch some live streams and or YouTube videos on because it, it needs to be hours worth of gameplay to be worth sixty in my mind. Because yeah, Skyrim, it's not like Skyrim. Yeah, <laughs> Skyrim like is a single player RPG, and it's it's worth sixty dollars. Yeah, it's uh, you know, huge. It's I, hours and hours, and it's moddable, and yeah, there's a lot to it. That game will last you forever. Oh, yeah. You could play Skyrim. It could be the only game you ever play, and you'll have a blast. Don't do it, though. That's dumb. But, yeah. <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> it's a good game. It's really good. So yeah. it just I feel like South Park, as Stick of Truth, looks like a novelty to me because it's making fun of games and pop culture and everything South Park stands for. Right. Can it really it's be... 60. Sixty dollars long, you know. It's just, yeah. yeah people even uh, no one in chat, <laughs> no one in chat is against us right now. By the way, no. <laughs> audio yeah. listeners, everyone, everyone agrees that that is too much for this game. So I mean, we're not alone. <laughs> we're not alone That's in these thoughts alone. here. So, oh, well, it, it's like you know the same thing with uh, uh, you've heard of Seven Days to Die. It's like forty dollars to buy the game, and it's and it's it's and Rust is only nineteen ninety nine, you know, and they need to lower their price for Seven Days to Die if they're if they they feel like if they want to succeed in this battle of survival games, it's too much. I mean, Daisy, I could see you know paying you know however forty dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it's because it's a really good, it's graphically well, you know, it's nice but not seven days to die that's too much yeah no it i have i don't know much about seven days to die but i do know it's not worth forty dollars from what i've yeah. seen of it so again it really uh, the price of some of these games especially seeing it on steam i was really excited i thought it was only going to be a console game but it's coming out for uh xbox playstation and pc so that's kind of cool but 60 yeah, it's no, a lot. I'm sorry, that's just too much. We'll see though. I don't yeah, want to it, be disappointed like Diablo. I paid sixty dollars for Diablo, and yeah, that was gosh, a major disappointment. It was not worth sixty dollars, especially when you yeah. have Torchlight, which was half the price, less than <laughs> that, and way more. Just oh, more Torchlight content. Two was so much more content than Diablo Three. Yeah, and because they're Blizzard and Diablo has that kind of clout, they were able to charge sixty bucks, and I bought it. South Park is South Park. It's not worth 60 bucks. Yeah, no. But who knows? Maybe it's just overwhelming popularity. We'll, we'll, uh, they'll get their money out of it, but not for me. I, I'm going to wait until I see a good sale on it. Even if it goes for like 45 bucks, maybe I'll, I'll jump on it then because I really want to play it. But Yeah, they could have even, uh, I mean, it sounds, like an, it sounds like it's episodic in a way, you know, where it's, it's got episodes, but I don't think so. I think but it's maybe like one future. super long episode is like what you're playing through. That's the story. Right. It's not going to be 30 they'll... minutes of gameplay. At least I hope not. I hope not. That would be... Well, thank you for playing. You know, you get the thank you screen at the end. After like 30 minutes, you're going, what? Yeah. And I mean, the, the argument being made in chat is if the game is... If the game has that many hours of gameplay in it, then $60 is worth it. And I agree with that. If it has 20 to... 50 hours of gameplay that's that's actually a pretty big spread i don't know <laughs> I, I don't really pay attention to how many hours i log in a game when i pay 60 bucks for it but i feel like if it has about 50 hours of gameplay or so like enough to make me feel like god this game never ends then it's worth 60 bucks when i get the feeling like oh my god this game is like taking me forever to get through then it's worth 60 bucks fable is a good example of that falling short because fable was like least amount of gameplay for my money i've ever paid for a game it was highly disappointing because it was amazing. Like it had all these things I've, ever, I've always yeah. wanted in a game, and then it just ended. And you're like, uh, "What? what? <laughs> Fa yeah, Fable? because most Fable. they want you, <laughs> they want you to play those little mini games. You know, like making pizzas and <laughs> whatever. It yeah, was. The, the newer ones had like all these mini games. I even, I played those and I liked them too. But again, they promised that the second one would be longer, and it wasn't. And they yeah. promised that the third one would be longer. And it wasn't. It was a little bit longer, but not, you know, not the first one was by far the shortest. But And right. I played a lot of mini games, and I did a lot of things to try to extend my experience in Fable. But in the end, it all just kind of felt like fluff, and it just wasn't 
there for me. So, right. I feel like the first game was unfortunately the best, but it was the shortest. And it's a great example because that's like one of those moments in gaming where you're like, I just paid 60, or I don't remember how much, I think Fable was probably 50, whatever games are going for back then, but it's like, I just paid full price for this game and now I can't play it anymore. I finished it. Like, there's nothing else I could do. It, they wanted you to replay it over and over, like, oh, now I can be evil. And I did that and it's still <laughs> yeah. over too soon. And I'm like, nah, I'm still, still not satisfied, Fable. Yeah, it's crazy. But amazing it's... game nonetheless. It is. It's, it, it was an amazing. I, I mean, the first one, I think, was that was what sold it. You know, you know that's what made them popular was the first one. But after that, it just kind of like kind of went downhill in a way. Yeah. So anyway, if, if it's long enough, it'll be worth it. <coughs> Excuse me. So, oh, <laughs> man, oh, man, <laughs> I'm just so hung up on this now that I forgot what I was going to mention next. And it's driving me nuts. We do need to talk about First Street real quick. We didn't do an episode last week. Right. It's like that's we just took a break from everything last week. <laughs> well, the bird flu. There's Flappy no bird. bird flu. <laughs> Flappy bird. <laughs> so there wasn't a new episode of First Street last week because we didn't, I didn't personally, I didn't like the way episode nine turned out. Like after I got finished editing it and put it all together, I kind of rushed it in, in editing. And I feel like we all had to rush it because we were just really short on time. Yeah, it was it was tough. I remember that. I, I mean, I ba- basically got the lines to you, you know, literally hours before you put it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it really was a rush job, and uh, it, it's it's still a lot of people did enjoy it. Uh, my mic quality has to be fixed. Like even during this podcast, I've been popping this whole time. I I'm going to use a pop filter when I record my lines from now on because. It didn't sound like it was popping, and then I was editing it, and I'm like, crap, there's all kinds of pops in this, and I don't have time to do my lines anymore. So right. we took a break. We we used the time to refine the next episode's, uh, you know, script. Storyline, everything, yes. Yeah, and this, I'm really excited about it. It's taking a really interesting turn, and I'm I'm very looking much looking forward to what people are going to think of it because it's... We're talking Breaking Bad here. No, no, don't promise these things, man. You can't do that. <laughs> All right. We are back. Internet. We're back. Damn, Internet. We need to get a studio, man. We need <laughs> it was right after I said Breaking Bad. I told you. You jinxed hmm. it. You can't say things like that. <laughs> so, anyway, we're talking about the first street script, and we're just really excited about it. That's basically all I was trying to say. We are very yeah. excited for the next episode of First Street, and we hope you are, too. So, look for that this Wednesday. All should go well, and it's going to take a very interesting turn. So, there you go. First Street coming soon. And uh, other than that, I mean, I think that's pretty much everything we wanted to talk about uh, on this episode. It was going to be a shorter episode without without Jemmy and stuff where we uh, we usually, when it's just like two of us, we usually do the episodes a little bit shorter. So, it's probably about time we wrap up anyway. Yeah. Final thoughts? That doesn't work? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Just wanted to send my website there so people can people can purchase games, Steam games at a discount. There you go. Um, so when South Park Stick of Truth, Truth comes out, you can probably save like five bucks. It's up there right now. You can, you can pre-order it right now. <laughs> so go check that out. And uh, yeah, that'll be linked in the show notes as well. Everythingnoob.com for all of that info. That's N O O B. Everything noob. Yep, and the Rust server, and the Rust server, and the Minecraft server, and all the servers. All the servers. We want to thank you all for joining <laughs> us this episode of Everything Noob. We will be sure to be back next week with more Jemmy. <laughs> yes, Jemmy. And uh, I'll probably be out next. No, we can't yeah, say that. Jinx. Dr- no, Dreadlo will get sick. <laughs> It'll be just Jemmy and I next week. <laughs> He'll suffer an unfortunate accident. Oh, no. (laughs) That sounds bad. But, yes, we'll see you next week. Thank you all for listening. All right. Thanks for listening to the Everything Noob podcast. Be sure to visit everythingnoob.com for previous episodes, show notes, host bios, and blogs. And while you're there, feel free to write us with any questions, comments, or suggestions you may have. Don't forget to check out the links to our Twitter, YouTube, and Twitch TV channel as well. On behalf of the noobs, see you next week, and happy gaming.